jaw would open sideways and... Welcome, listeners. I'm the one known as Cool Josh. And I'll be hosting you during your time here on Off-Brand Horror. After a very generous week off after being held captive by a monster for weeks and selling my soul to the devil to get free, I am back to keep you all company throughout your time here. We're going to start off with Josh reading the creepy pasta known as Gurgles and Bugman. But you'll want to stick around long after that for there is plenty more to come, including multiple voicemails from listeners like you. So when your kids ask you, Mom, Dad, can we stop for scary stories? You can tell them we have scary stories at home. Welcome to Off Brand Horror. Good afternoon or good evening. You are listening to Off Brand Horror. I'm Josh. I'm Kristen. And we are back after Halloween. Uh, spooky season is over, but the spooks do not have to end. Um, even though it seems like uh, the spooks really want it to end because uh, <laughs> we had some trouble. We've been having some trouble keeping up, recording, editing. Getting the lighting right. For Getting the lighting right because we we had to take all the Halloween decorations over or down, and then we did a little uh, redecorating in the room for the normal episodes. And it feels like it's been forever since we've recorded, even though it hasn't been. We've been recording like every week. So uh, I don't know. It's it's a curse, which. We're going to get into at the end of the episode when we do our usual uh, spooky updates and uh, all that good stuff. But for the main part of the episode today, I will be telling the story uh, from the Creepypasta Wiki um, that some of you may have heard before. Some of you may be brand new. I know it's brand new to you, Kristen. It's called Gurgles and Bugman. And I hate the title. It, it sounds <laughs> like it's not going to be something I'm going to enjoy. So this story is credited to uh, Won't Think Straight. And we will have the uh, link to the story in the description. But it is from the Creepypasta Wiki. When you're five years old, your mind lacks the experience to make informed judgments or connect things which aren't obvious. Over the years, the details get fuzzy and forgotten. Speaking with my parents the other day, they cleared the cobwebs burying this story. I remember much too clearly the story of Gurgles and Bugman. I just started kindergarten that year. Everyone's a friend when you're five, so I had no shortage of classmates. But coming from a poor family, I didn't get to see much of them outside of school. My parents spent all of their waking hours trying to make ends meet and didn't have time to ferry me from house to house. So, I spent my early years mostly keeping to myself, playing with the random assortment of knickknacks from the shelf in my room, and being short of money gave my family a habit of hoarding, so they hated to throw anything out. One particular item on the shelf was a small, old-fashioned TV set, a wooden veneer box about two foot wide by a foot tall. It had a curved glass screen that took up half the front panel. Beside the screen was a large chrome dial used to switch channels. At the top sat an antenna formed by two terribly twisted wires. When my boredom made me turn it on, I'd usually just get static and snow on that glowing black and white screen. I'd twist the heavy clicking dial hoping to pick up some local broadcasts. Mostly it would be some ghostly images and incoherent sound fragments, but one channel was always crystal clear. 
It was the Gurgles and Bugman show. Gurgles was a clown, but not a common one. He wore a thin black suit that draped his tall, skinny body with a matching tie and oversized novelty clown shoes to complete his distinctive outfit. His pupils were completely black, like polished ebony marbles, with no trace of white around them. Black face paint around those eyes and across his cheeks and mouth made him look like a manic, grinning skeleton. It was only the crazy crop of curly hair sprouting off the sides of his head that gave him a more human look. As much as Gurgles freaked me out, Bugman scared me more. He was short and round, like a hunchbacked dwarf, with a dark cape. He had prosthetics covering his eyes to make him look like a fly, and a mouth that was rotated 90 degrees and opened from side to side. The show itself was like candid camera, with pranks played on unsuspecting people. It would always start with Gurgles and Bugman hidden away at someone's home. Gurgles would face the camera, staring at you, his bony finger touching his lips. When the unsuspecting star of the show came into view, a laugh track would begin to play. You would see them go about their nightly routines, oblivious to the conspiracy that Gurgles and Bugman had involved us in. We'd see them making dinner, or on the lounge watching TV with their family, or quietly doing their homework. Then we'd watch as Gurgles and Bugman stole their pen, or moved their glass, or made things disappear behind their backs. The camera angles would change as Gurgles and Bugman shifted their hiding place from the dark corners of a room to the cupboards, to the ceiling, or under the furniture. All the while looking back at you, the viewer, and winking. The closer they got, the louder and more laughter came from the soundtrack. Eventually, when everyone went to sleep, a victim would be chosen for their prank. Waiting in the closet or under the bed, once their victim fell asleep, Bugman would crawl out and gently climb in beside them. His jaw would open sideways, and out would come a sharp straw that he'd stick in the person's neck. This always paralyzed their victim, because sometimes you could see them struggle if they woke and saw Gurgles and Bugman on top of them. The laugh track would then be extra loud and uproarious those few times the victims woke. Gurgles would make faces at the camera while the audience laughed, and Bugman would use his straw to drink from the person's neck. When the victim stopped struggling after a few minutes, and the laughter would turn into claps and cheering. With Bugman finished, Gurgle's face would fill the whole screen with his impossibly wide, sharp-toothed grin. Then he'd whisper, See you again soon. The way those all-black eyes pierced through the screen always gave me the chills. I hated that show but would always be too afraid to go near the TV while it was running. One day, the TV mysteriously disappeared from my room. My parents told my five-year-old self that they sold it to pay some bills. I accepted that without question. I was kind of glad it was gone. But yesterday, when I asked them about that TV again, they exchanged nervous glances and then filled in some missing gaps from my childhood. Halfway through that year, Derek, a classmate that I didn't know very well, had died in horrific circumstances. He was murdered in his bed with a stab wound to his neck. No evidence of a break-in was ever found, so his distraught parents were taken into custody as the primary suspects. They denied all the allegations against them. At the time, Mrs. Nolan, my teacher, had told our class that I'd apparently explained to her that Derek couldn't be dead because I saw him and his family on the Gurgles and Bugman show the day before. When Mrs. Nolan mentioned that to my parents, they had immediately taken the TV from my room, driven it to a junkyard, and had it burned to nothing but ashes and molten metal. That TV was in my room because it had always been broken. It was never plugged in the entire time it was on my shelf. Whatever I saw on that screen, 
It wasn't from a station. So that's my story of Gurgles and Bugman. But I'm not sure if that's really the end, though. After all, do Gurgles and Bugman still perform their nightly show for some unsuspecting viewer somewhere in this world? And if so, who will be their next star? <laughs> Thoughts? <laughs> mm, did not like that. Gross. I mean, the good thing is, with that being a creepy pasta, it's most likely just made up. Yeah, that <laughs> sounds very made up. Still a spooky story to Still think about. Still something you'll be thinking about when you're falling asleep. Something at that night. will scare you at night. Yeah. Mm-hmm. After I read it, I was like, ah, it's kind of you know, it's kind of silly, but you know, it's spooky. And then whenever I was like laying in bed, falling asleep, I was like, oh, there's gurgles. And <laughs> <laughs> also, like the uh, aspect of them like pretty much like stalking their victim beforehand is like. Ew, you don't know if someone's watching you. Yep. I do not like the names. Like, I don't know. For some reason, Gurgles for the name of the clown, just it's a <laughs> creepy name. Is that what it sounds like whenever they're drinking the blood? Oh, <laughs> maybe so. <laughs> <laughs> also, like, Gurgles, like, if you're, like, choking on something or, like, uh, drowning, I guess, mm-hmm. is what I would, like, kind of... Makes yeah. me think of. Yeah. Uh, well, guys, we are going to go to a quick commercial break, but stay right there because we will be back with um, plenty more to talk about. So see you after the break. You just lick, stick, and blip instantly to your nearest Spirit Halloween. Has your loved one used the Spirit Halloween portal after Halloween has already ended? You may be entitled to a cash award. The Spirit Halloween portal was designed to transport you to the nearest Spirit Halloween so you wouldn't have to drive around looking for where it's located during Halloween season. The creators of the portal did not account for where this portal would take you after Halloween was over. Thousands of people around the world have used this portal out of curiosity after Spirit Halloween closed down and have never been heard from again. Our team of lawyers threw a camera through the portal and this is what they captured. It appears to be a place where costumes and decorations are all very much alive and are tormenting all who entered the portal for what we can only assume to be an eternity. The FBI is currently planning a potential rescue mission for those who have crossed over, but we here at the Blakely Law Firm will get those who have lost family members to this absolute tragedy caused by the owners of off-brand horror a cash award Guaranteed. If you own a Spirit Halloween portal, throw it away immediately. I am Howard Blakely and I approve this message. Welcome back. What a wonderful show we've been watching so far, huh? We just left off with Josh telling the Gurgles and Bugman creepy pasta. And now, Kristen will tell us the meaning behind the term lost media along with some horrifying stories behind what made them lost to begin with. And uh, we also have a weather break, Crystal Weathers, Um, and voicemails from you all still to come. Let's get back to the show. So he's on fire. I'm peeing on him. Oh, we're back. Uh, Welcome back to Off Brand Horror. Uh, Kristen, I understand that you have a story you would like to tell us. Well, so your story kind of is like in the vein of lost media, like, Mm -hmm. you know, similar. And if any of y'all do not know what lost media is, it's a fun little rabbit hole you can go down on the internet. Uh, Some of the lost media is kind of disturbing, but there's fun ones too, like uh, cartoons from local channels that are kind of lost to... Like, you know, if the local channel closed down, no one really has any copies of it from a long time ago. So people will try to find, you know, copies of that cartoon they used to watch. And there's like a whole online community about it. So I have a couple of creepy lost media subjects to talk about, I guess. And you are familiar with one of them. Okay. It's one of the more popular ones. So the first one is Warner Hartzog's Game in the Sand. Game in the Sand is a mysterious, unreleased documentary short film made in 1964 by Werner Herzog. 
Not much is known about the film other than it involves four children and a rooster in a cardboard box. At one point, the rooster is buried up to its neck in sand. The only thing that Herzog has said publicly about the film is that things got out of hand, it's more than likely the rooster was accidentally killed. Herzog has stated only about four people have seen the film, and he will most likely destroy the negatives before he dies. Hmm. Dang. Yeah, so I guess, like, lost media can also uh, be films and stuff that, you know, famous producers and stuff make that they never release. So everybody's, yeah. like, real curious about what's on it. And yeah try to find it. Another one is the WWF death video. In 1999, tragedy struck during the WWF over the edge event when wrestler Owen Hart fell to his death. A stunt where Hart was supposed to be lowered into the ring went horribly wrong. The harness that was holding him snapped and Hart plummeted 80 feet. The event wasn't recorded live over pay-per-view, but cameras were rolling and they managed to capture Hart's fateful fall. The video is now rumored to sit in the WWE archive with the instructions never to destroy, view, or duplicate. The closest thing available was the WWF announcement at the event informing the audience that Hart had died, but that too has been blocked on copyright grounds. Hmm. It was a pre-recorded event, I guess. And so they just edited that part out. Yeah. Gotcha. And my last one is the SeaWorld killer whale death footage. On February 24th, 2010, Don Branchow, Bronchow, Bronco, was tragically killed by Tilikum, the largest killer whale held in captivity at SeaWorld Orlando. It was during one of her shows, which Branchow liked to record, meaning the whole incident was caught on tape. Part of the attack was shown in the documentary Blackfish, but the film only included the part right before uh, Tilikum dragged Branchow into the water. The remaining footage has never been made public, and it's unknown exactly who has it. Most likely, SeaWorld has either locked it away or destroyed it. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, lost media is definitely, it's usually like, you know, tragedies, I guess. Yeah, that is but, usually what it is, mostly because, you know, the people recording it try hard to yeah. get rid of the footage There's other forms. There's other forms of it, though, that it's just like, for instance, don't you have like a cartoon you remember watching? Yes, and if anybody has remembers this please let me know because no one i have asked uh knows what i'm talking about but i swear i watched this when i was a kid uh it was i think it was called the librarian and the fly and the fly would always like mess with the librarian and so she would try to shush it and kill it or whatever and this one scene i vividly remember is she is the fly is flying up and she's like stacking books higher and higher trying to uh get to the fly and then she starts grabbing from the bottom of the stack and then once she realizes there's no like base she falls down (laughs) but so if anybody knows what i'm talking about (laughs) let us know in the comments send us a message uh something like that and if you have any lost media any things you remember from your childhood it could be commercials cartoons movies whatever uh that just you can't seem to find anywhere it's like it doesn't exist uh then that's considered lost media until you find it and the way you find it is you put it out there like what kristen just did and you hope that it eventually makes its way to someone who's like oh i know what that is i actually still have that on vhs or something and then it's found it's then found media so if you've heard of that let us know if you have anything you can't seem to find anyone let us know it's an interesting uh topic Uh, But speaking of calling us and reaching out to us, we do have a couple of voicemails that we would like to uh, listen to um, here on the air. Uh, If you would like to uh, call us, you can, of course, call us at 858-215-4455. Leave us a voicemail of your scary stories. Uh, You can also text that number as well. But we will get to that after we take a quick weather break uh, with Crystal Weathers. Crystal, you've been through a lot lately. We're glad to have you back. Uh, Hope that it wasn't too traumatic, but uh, go ahead and take it away. Thank you, Josh. Sunday will be sunny and warm. It'll bring a cascade of childhood memories of summer fun. Monday will be hot, almost unbearable. Wednesday will be warm but cloudy. You'll remember that time as a child when your friend made fun of one of your physical features that you were previously not self-conscious about, but then you began to fixate on it. 
You start spending time in the mirror hoping you could distract from it or make it less noticeable. Pick and scrape at it, maybe you can make it smaller. As the years pass, looking at it brings you anxiety and a knot in your stomach. So you get it removed. You feel the relief, but you feel like a part of you has been taken away. Saturday will be sunny with a high of 72 and partially cloudy. A perfect day. That is all. Back to you. All right. We appreciate it, Crystal. Uh, Crystal actually has a haircut, just like you. Did you see that? Yeah. Look Looks good. That. Looks yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. Both of you having a little cut at the same time. Look at that. Uh, we will be right back after this final commercial break. Now, the media tries to say that Howard Blakely can't save you from monsters. Donation to Howard Blakely ain't going to do you no good. Ha, 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 ha,
he, 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 uh, he, practice whatever, he just tells us everything, like, that there's danger, there's, like, serial killers out. And we say, okay, thanks for the warning. And then he, we turn around, and we walk away, and then he's like, and then anyway, he's like, I'm like, wait, we're, me and my friend were like, well, anyway, but could you give us, like, the rest where they, and he, whatever, I let me say that, he, he's gone, he's nowhere near. And then, yeah. And then, one of, I'm sorry for saying that, but one of our, one of my friends say, um, oh damn bro, I'm turning into a pussy right now. Like, he was scared as hell, but yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, these got some characters calling in. Okay, all but right. yeah, that is creepy though for someone like, hey, watch out, there's serial killers around, then they disappear. Yeah, yeah. Just for anyone who may not have been able to make it out, it, uh, Google does its best to uh, transcribe the calls into text. Uh, he says, "My experience of, a, of of seeing a monster is," and then he says, "Sorry, excuse the people in the background because there's people talking in the background." Uh, Halloween of 2021, there was this guy who came up to me and he said, uh, hey, be careful, they're serial killers. And they said, thank you for the warning. And then he turned around, and or they turned around, and then when they turned back around to ask for directions somewhere, the guy was just gone. Um, but during all of that... <laughs> For some reason, <laughs> this person goes in the middle of their story, pussy. <laughs> then they go, sorry for saying that. And then he goes, but then one of my friends said, I'm turning into a pussy right now. <laughs> like he was scared as hell. So the fir- this is my question to you if you're listening to this right now. Did the first pussy... Oh my god. Have anything to do with the second pussy? Oh no. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Because it seemed like you're calling somebody one and then apologize also, for it, but then said it again for the rest of <laughs> for to your, finish off for the your story. story. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken. And then yeah. Pussy and then one of- I'm sorry for saying that, but one of our, one of my friends say, um, oh damn bro, I'm turning into a pussy right now. Like he was scared as hell, but yeah. (laughs) I don't know, Chris. Sound like a little kid. Honestly, maybe we shouldn't be. (laughs) All right. Uh, we have one more call for you. Uh, this is the longest one and, uh. See what they say. Okay, so when I was little, I used to um, see things, I guess. Like, um, you know, dolls floating and shadows, just crazy shit. Until when I was about 12, we were playing hide and seek in the dark, and all of a sudden I just freeze and I can't move, and I'm just like, Stuck like sleep paralysis, but this is in the middle of running around, and I'm just frozen in pitch blackness. And all of a sudden, uh, I see something darker than dark. <laughs> Somehow, it's darker than complete black. Um, it was a claw, and it was slowly coming towards my face and pointing at my eye, and then it just jabbed me right in the freaking eyeball. I start bleeding and. Screaming bloody murder, and my mom comes and gets me. And yeah, ever since then, I haven't had any paranormal encounters. So I think I had an ability or something, and it took it. It took my sight. So yeah, so I'd share that with you. My dad said when he was little, uh, this was before it even happened to me. He told me a story when I was a kid that um, he had a demon crawling on his ceiling, and his sister was just walking by. And she seen something, she freaked out, come, came in the room, turned on the light, and there was nothing, and my dad just woke up and started screaming. So, I think, I don't know, maybe my family has a no little tie to, uh, to these things, and we are kind of targeted. So, well, that's probably true. And, uh, yeah. Uh, and, I'll see you. Bye. That was a creepy one. Yeah, it was. The story was creepy, and then like the screaming in the background the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Sound like a little kid, maybe. 
Yeah, I thought so at first, but then like, I don't know, it's kind of like regular, like maybe a bird or something. But uh, yeah, to be, he said he was playing hide and seek and he was in the closet yeah. and got paralysis and something like a claw poked Stuck him in the eye. Stuck him in the eye and he started bleeding. Um, I can't move. I'm stuck like sleep paralysis. Um, all of a sudden I see something darker than dark. It was a claw and it was slowly coming toward my face and pointing at my eye. Mm. And then it jabbed me right in the freaking eyeball. Started bleeding, started screaming bloody murder. My mom comes to get me, and ever since then, I haven't had any paranormal characters. Uh, so I think I had an ability or something. And uh, see, this is the part that I right here it says took my side, and it took my side, but it kind of sounded like he said took my sight. So did like his paranormal abilities, or did he lose vision? In that that's what eye? I mean. Like it stabbed him in the eye, and he started bleeding. Did yeah. you did you lose vision in your eye? And then he told the story about his dad, that his dad told him about a demon crawling on his ceiling, I think is what he said. And uh, his sister was just walking by and she saw something and she freaked out. He said he feels like his family is kind of uh, targeted by this kind of thing. I want to listen to that part again to see if I can, if he's saying his sight. Okay, so when I was little, I used to um, see things, I guess. Like, um, what's he say? You know, right dolls there? floating, um, see things. shadows. See the, yeah. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Shit. Like, he said, like, floating dolls and, and shadows. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. and all of a sudden, uh, I see something darker than dark. <laughs> That's screaming in the background. <laughs> Somehow, it's darker than complete black. Um, it was a claw, and it was slowly coming towards my face and pointing at my eye, and then it just jabbed me right in the freaking eyeball. I start bleeding and screaming bloody murder, and my mom comes to get me, and yeah. Ever since then, I haven't had any paranormal encounters, so I think I had an ability or something, and it took it. It took my sight. So, okay, so it took his ability to... My dad see the paranormal or encounter the paranormal gotcha gotcha which would make sense like on like a because uh, it seemed like targeted like he marked him or something like yeah it did. yeah hmm yeah thank you for sharing that <laughs> sorry um looky there we went from having uh, just one prior call to three all at once uh so thank all of you who called and told your stories um the funny ones and the uh the first one, the trend just now was the first one was funny, the second one was funny and creepy, and then the third one was just pure spookiness. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> and like it's terrifying. Creepy yeah. Stabbed you in the eye. Ew. Ugh. Could you imagine like being stuck in a closet and something coming at you? No, no. I I want to research that now. As we always say, we want to, if we get like a story, like something like that is what I mean. Like I want to research. And then if I find anything and if you find anything, we can talk about it on the next episode. But like if anyone else has been poked in the eye, you know, cause that's like a unique, uh, thing to happen, like on the paranormal side of things, you know, yeah, to actually be touched as well. Right. Right. I will read Brad's story next week. We will reveal if we find anyone else who's been physically assaulted or poked in the eye or anything like that next week. And lost their ability to see the paranormal. Yeah, yeah. So uh, thank you, and we will see you next week on Off Brand Horror. All right, guys, so we ended the show and realized we did not talk about our own experiences that have been happening, and uh, I blame that on the curse, too. I think we're cursed. We talk, We thought we were cursed for Terraform uh, when we did Terraform Podcast. Our last episode ever of Terraform po Podcast was called The Cursed Episode, and everything went wrong for that episode. And lately, everything's been going wrong for us, but <laughs> in addition to that, uh, we've had some spooky stuff happening to us that we want to talk about. So uh, what's the first thing you can remember, Kristen? What what started all this? Uh, Jules growling and barking at the same time every night for Was no reason. Was that the first thing that started happening? I think so. 
Okay, so at least one of the things that's been happening is our dog, Juliet, um, every single night at 9.30 p.m. As soon as we lay in bed, get comfortable, and try to go to sleep. She starts growling, and sometimes that turns into a bark. And she is looking, if, you, if we turn the lamp on, at our bedroom door, which is closed. And she will not stop until I get up and I freaking check the entire house. I flip all of our lights on. I look through every closet and everything. And she follows me around while I do this. And then we go back in the bedroom and we go to sleep. And that is unusual for her. That's never anything that she's done. And so we were like, what the heck? Like, is there something in this house? I know. I was like, we got like a ghost in here. We got a stalker outside, like walking around. Yeah. Like, what the heck is up with that? The other thing that's been happening is... The owl? Huh? The owl? The owl. Okay. Am I missing something? There's... We never write anything down. Yeah. We are horrible. And we're getting old, so our freaking brains don't work like they used to. And we should have written, we, yeah, we've got plenty more things that have happened, but I can't freaking remember anything. One of the things though is, yeah, we've been hearing an owl at night, which is like, obviously bullcrap, but you can look up that there's like (laughs) spiritual means to it. It's someone trying to get in contact with you. Like these people say that someone's going to die soon. These people say that it means you're becoming friends with someone you shouldn't become friends with. These people, you know, so there's all kinds of meaning. But we just always think of the movie The Fourth Kind. I know, so I'm scared aliens are out there about to get me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We've heard noise going. One of the things that happened was, Kristen, you went outside to get into the truck. I can't believe you're the one that forgot this. And you heard someone walking towards you. You heard leaves crunching. Yeah, there was a bunch of like crunching of the leaves in the yard. And oh my God, I got so. Wait, we do have a stalker. Yeah, because it was pitch black outside. And you went out there to get in the car. To get in the car. And the leaves started crunching. And like I hopped in real quick and shut the door and locked it. Oh my yeah. gosh. <laughs> well, look, we've got our freaking security cameras. So if any if if the stalker is listening, we're gonna catch you. We got we got cameras everywhere. <laughs> You're gonna get got. They're not not being camera there. We're gonna catch you now. <laughs> <laughs> but to tag on to you saying you think there's a stalker, that's the thing that we we do have cameras and I check the cameras and there's nothing. So it's probably a ghost. (laughs) (laughs) It's something that can't be seen. (laughs) I'm okay. So I've been having night terrors lately. The ones where I think that I'm awake and then maybe I am, maybe I'm not. I think that I'm probably just still in a dream state. But uh, one night recently, someone uh, walked into our room and maybe I'm thinking about Jules. But something, you know, that's in my head right before I go to sleep because she's barking and growling. But someone walked into the room and was like looking at us while we were sleeping. And yeah, so, and remember what happened? Mm -mm. I started like screaming in bed. Oh. And you woke me up, right? Yeah. Like you had one of your sleep paralysis things. Yeah, and it was because someone walked into the room. Like, and I literally thought someone walked in the room and I was like, Usually when I have sleep paralysis, which, oh, you told me I was wrong about this. I, I thought that I didn't make noise. I thought that I was just like, mm, mm, like when I'm frozen <laughs> oh, and I know that I'm frozen, but you said it's more than that. But this time, like, I remember I woke up screaming and so that happened. And then actually last night I woke up in the middle of the night and I heard, <laughs> I heard the whistler from the first episode of Opera and Horror. If you want to go back and watch that, if you haven't seen that yet. Uh, I heard that whistle last night whenever I woke up. Mm-mm-mm. Uh, there was one night where, I mean, this used to happen to me more when I was younger, but it sounded like we were sleeping, sounded like someone slammed the door, like as I was like falling asleep, I guess. Mm-hmm. And it woke me up and yeah. I was just staring at the door, wondering yeah. if you heard it too. That's happened to me before too. Oh, I can't think of anything else. I think there was even more, but I mean... If that wasn't freaking plenty for you, like that, an insane amount of stuff just started happening. It's weird. Like we we got a bunch of calls, and then also we had a bunch of like creepy stuff happening to us. No, this is like in the past two weeks. So yeah, it it was ever since uh, we started 
started watching like uh we watched hocus pocus <laughs> and then we watched the craft and we got kind of like in a witchy mood we were watching like witchcraft <laughs> movies and then i did a magic trick on the episode before last and uh we were like talking about like i wanted to do the hocus pocus chance the ichita walk <laughs> magic yeah that is it for sure this time We will see you next week on Off Brand Horror. Well, what do you say we turn the lights on, kids? Wouldn't want Gurgles and Bugman to come get you tonight, now would you? Also, yes, this is the first time you're seeing me hold a microphone, but usually I hide this thing somewhere and try to be a little more professional, but, uh, Honestly, who gives a shit, right? We're almost at the end of the season, and uh, you'll probably never see me again. Um, stay safe out there, kids. Watch out for Gurgles and Bugman. Tell us what your lost media is and something to do with... I don't... And we will see you next week on Off Brand Horror. I'm going to give you a drink.